good morning or whenever you're watching this uh, I'm putting this down or videoing this in uh, uh, on Friday morning before Sunday and on Sunday we're going to have eight young people confirm their faith so that's the background uh, with this message as well our message is based on John chapter 1 uh, verses 1 to 18 and 29 and we're looking at uh, uh, Christmas according to the gospel writers we're looking at Christmas according to John and our theme is the who and why of Christmas let's pray Dear Heavenly Father, thank you that we can listen to you, speak to us through this message, encourage us, upbuild us and uh, lead us to always trust in you as our dear Father and in Jesus as our Saviour and Lord. In his name we pray. Amen. Well, um, this week we're looking at the Gospel of John and what John says about Christmas. Uh, well, spoiler alert, he doesn't say a whole lot. <laughs> uh, um, like Mark in his Gospel, which some of us looked at last week, John has no Christmas story in his account of the life of Jesus. Only Luke and Matthew tell us the how of Christmas. Uh, John doesn't give us the how of Christmas, um, but like Mark, he gives us the who and the why of Christmas, and that's what we'll be focusing on this morning. Let me begin by telling you a story. Uh, this is called Carl's Crusade, and actually the young people who are confirming their faith on Sunday had this as their very in their very first lesson. We had 12 get-togethers looking at uh, uh, modules on Jesus and modules on faith, and the very first Jesus module had this story. So I want to share it with you and remind the young people of it. Um, Carl loved bugs. You can see him look at the ant ants there. Um, he loved collecting them. He loved watching them. Uh, he loved having them inside. His mum gave him two rules. Don't hurt the bugs. And secondly, don't let them loose in the house. And well, he kept the first one, but the second one not so well. Anyway, Carl wasn't only interested in bugs in jars. He used to go outside among nature and look at all the bugs around the place. And one day he spied a trail of ants. Um, he watched them as they went down the side of a tree, across a cement d driveway, up a post, and then on a wooden ledge, right uh, to where Mrs. Parsons, the next door neighbor, had put some honey laced with uh, poison. So Carl was really perturbed by this. There he is, aghast. And he thought to himself, what can I do? I can shout out to the ants and warn them, don't go that way. Um, but uh, when he did that, that didn't uh, serve any purpose, naturally. And then he put a barrier down so the ants couldn't go uh, to the honey, but they just went round the barrier and headed to the honey uh, uh, and uh, to their death. Um, so finally, Carl thought to himself, if only I be could become an ant. So he imagined himself becoming, going from being a human being to being an ant and uh, warning the ants and rescuing the ants. So as an ant, Carl was able to save the ants. Now he could tell them what the danger was. Now he could rescue them um, and lead them to a safer way. You know, this is a parable that reminds us of what God did for us at the first Christmas. At the first Christmas, God became an ordinary human being for us, a tiny little baby out of love for us. Um, let's think about the who of Christmas, because I guess our final confession, the final confession that you make about Jesus is that he was God among us. Um, 
but as you think about Jesus, the baby in the manger, that's not a confession you come to straight away. I think probably the first uh, confession you come to as you read the Gospels is that Jesus was a great teacher. And you can't read the Gospels without being uh, amazed at Jesus' teaching. Uh, read the Sermon on the Mount from Matthew 5 to 7, for example. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for they will inherit the kingdom of God. Uh, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted, and so on. And Jesus says, you've heard that it was said, love your, love your neighbours and hate your enemies. But now I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. So as you look at um, Jesus, as you listen to him, uh, you can't help but be impressed that he was a great teacher. Um, gradually, you can come to appreciate that Jesus was who he said he was, the Son of God. Remember in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus prayed, Abba, Father, dear Father, take this cup of suffering away from me. And that's how Jesus spoke about God as his dear Father and himself as having a unique relationship with uh, the Father uh, as the Son. Um, and this is a claim of Jesus that we can believe and trust because God himself has shown us that we can by empowering Jesus to do miracle after miracle. And each miracle, like uh, the raising of, the Lazarus, raising of Lazarus from the dead, the healing of paralytics, the stilling of storms, each miracle is done by God's power. And it's God's way of affirming who Jesus is. And supremely, of course, God's raising of Jesus from the dead on that first Easter Sunday is God's, well, gigantic seal of approval on Jesus. So I think uh, as you look at Jesus, you confess firstly, yeah, he was a great teacher. And then you may be led to understand, yes, he was who he claimed he was, the Son of God. Um, the final step that you make and can make is to confess that Jesus was God himself become a human being. Remember John, um, uh, remember Thomas in John's gospel. Um, John relates that the disciples uh, gathered together behind closed doors on that Easter Sunday night and Jesus appeared to them, but Thomas wasn't there. And a week later, um, uh, uh, Jesus appeared to Thomas who had said, I'm not going to believe unless I can touch Jesus and put, my, put his hand in the, his side. Jesus appeared to him. And do you remember what Thomas said? He fell down on his knees and said, my Lord and my God. It was the only way that um, Thomas could make sense of Jesus and it was the only way that the early Christians could make sense of Jesus. That when Jesus was among them, God was among them. And John confesses this at the start of his gospel uh, in uh, the focal verses for this message. Um, John says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and through the word of God uh, everything came into being. And then uh, he goes on and says, And the word became a human being and full of grace and truth lived among us. We saw his glory, the glory that he received as the father's only son. Uh, who's the word? Uh, the son of God become a human being. And John says, no one has ever seen God. The only son who is the same as God and is at the father's side, he has made him known. He has made him known. Do you hear what uh, John's saying? Um, he's saying, God in the person of the son uh, became an ordinary baby for us and lived among us and communicated to us about God 
and then uh, went the road to the cross to rescue us. Which brings us to the why of Christmas. You know, uh, Carl, um, you know, he tried to shout out to the ants, tried to put a barrier up, and then he imagined turning himself into an ant. Why? For what purpose? To rescue the ants. And that's what God's done. He's become a human being, a little baby, and then the man Jesus who walked the road to the cross uh, to rescue us. Um, that's what Carl imagined, and that's exactly what God, uh, why God became a human being for us in order to rescue us. Remember um, the final verse that was read out before from John chapter 1, verse 29. Uh, John the Baptist sees Jesus coming and says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Behold the sacrifice that's going to take away the sin of everyone. You know, John was the son of a priest of Zechariah. Uh, he was familiar with the fact that every day in the temple, in the morning and the evening, a lamb was sacrificed for the sins of the people there. Uh, John's saying that Jesus is the lamb, the lamb from God, who uh, is sacrificed to take away the sins of the whole world. Everyone sins. On the cross, Jesus uh, suffered uh, the penalty, the judgment for everyone's sins. Um, God became a human being in order to take away the sin of the world as he suffered and died on the cross for us. God in the person of his son Jesus took the rap for us when he suffered and died on the cross. Now I can't say those words without thinking of an illustration that I've often used here, uh, that of me getting the cane. I won't go into it in detail but I, a couple of times at primary school I got the cane for doing stuff I shouldn't do. And I imagine, in my imagination, I imagine the headmaster about to give me the cane and my classroom teacher coming into the room and saying, Wayne, you can go back to your classroom. I'm going to take the punishment for you. Now, that never, ever happened and didn't happen, uh, but that's what God's done for us. God has taken the rap for us uh, on the cross. And how do we receive the benefit of what God's done for everyone on the cross? Well, through faith. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that whoever believes in him may not be lost but have eternal life. That's what John writes. Maybe the words of Jesus, we're not exactly sure, but it seems to be, they seem to be the word of Jesus as you follow John chapter 3 through. So it's through um, trusting in Jesus as our Saviour, saying to God, Dear God, please forgive me for Jesus' sake. Jesus suffered and died on the cross for my, in my stead. He took the rap for me. You know, as part of our Explorers Club, we in the second half when we looked at our faith modules, we use the, uh, Luther's small catechism as a basis to look at the Ten Commandments and the Creed and the Lord's Prayer and so on. You might remember some of you who uh, went through confirmation a while back. I know I had to learn this off by heart and maybe some of you did. But the uh, second article of the Creed, I tried to get the confirmees to le learn it um, they learnt the books of the New Testament and I think all of them uh, know them off by heart, but I didn't get very far with the explanation of the second article. But I love it. Uh, the first half has to do with the who of Christmas. I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, Son of the Father from eternity and true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord. And then... Uh, Martin Luther goes on and says, at great cost, he has saved and redeemed me. To redeem is to buy back, to rescue. A lost and condemned person. That's who we are. We're mess ups. We deserve God's judgment and his punishment for all our sins, for all the crummy things that we've done in our life. 
Um, but um, Jesus has freed us from sin, death, and the power of the devil, not with gold, silver or gold, but with his holy and precious blood and his innocent suffering and death. I love this uh, description of what uh, Jesus did for us, of the why of Christmas, why God became a human being. Which brings us to our situation. Um, where does that leave you and me uh, as we approach Christmas? Well, it leaves you and me in exactly the same position as these young people are going to be in uh, come this Sunday. Um, they're going to be deciding for themselves. They're going to be confessing for themselves that they trust in Jesus as their saviour and want to follow Jesus as their Lord. And that's where this message leaves us, I think, deciding for ourselves who the baby in the manger is and whether we want to trust in Jesus as our saviour and our rescuer and follow Jesus in our life as our Lord. You know, the song that we're going to sing in worship uh, in the confirmation service uh, after this message is the song, Lord, I lift your name on high. Love, Lord, I love to sing your praises. And this is sort of the chorus, which I love. You came from heaven to earth to show the way. From the earth to the cross, my debt to pay. Uh, that's what uh, God in the person of the Son has done. He showed us the way. He's rescued us. Uh, my debt to pay. Uh, from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on high. What a wonderful God we have. A God who was prepared to come down to be an ordinary human being in the person of the Son. And as a human being, he showed us his love and told us about his love, showed us the way and paid the debt uh, that we deserve to pay for ourselves. May God bless you this Christmas and always as you remember who, the who of Christmas and the why of Christmas. Amen.